Hi guys, it's me Karen and I've come back for part two and as you can tell I have not finished coloring the little guys here because I had gotten to think about maybe you wanted a little tutorial on finishing the fur. And what we did in the last video was uh, just started adding little lines and I am using the uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos in a bunch of different shades of um, the browns. So basically every single brown <laughs> that I have in my set. I have a, um, I gotta see what size this is, 36 count um, of the Polychromos uh, plus extras that I bought um, online. Uh, mostly skin tones and um, pink tones though. So these are what the browns are. Some of these might be skin tones, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just going in with um, sharp points and I was just taking it and um, making the little lines for the fur. I always start around the eyes just so I can get a little personality out of the bunny rabbits or any other animals I'm doing. And I want to bring the fur up into the ears because in life all critters have fuzzy little ears. And I also, when I um, go down towards the snow area here where his feet are inside the snow, instead of going down I take it to that line and pull it up. So I wanted to make sure you saw that. And these are going to be smaller strokes because this is going to be half of that in the snow part. Let's go another foot over here. And then we will bring down lines on top of those lines. And I just keep turning uh, my pencil so I get a sharp edge on that. And I just go ahead and just kind of go like if you had an animal in front of you or a pet. When you pet them, their fur generally goes from head down their back, around their legs if they're standing up, so the fur would come downward, under the chin, this direction, and of course up on the ears. We used to have a pet rabbit. <laughs> Got it for the kids um, when they were little. We went out and looked at cute little bunnies and picked one out and then had to wait for it to you know, reach the right age. And in my head I was thinking, you know, oh I can take care of a bunny. Um, I'm allergic to them but we have, it was an outdoor rabbit. So we had a rabbit tat built for him. His name was Bandit. He was a black and white bunny. A little, uh, uh, I wouldn't call him like a northern dwarf, but he was a smaller bunny rabbit. So we had a hutch with um, two rooms. So he could have uh, air all completely open on one side and then the other was a uh, enclosed area with a house in it for him to sleep in. And then he had a, um, we built him a wired mesh that went up four feet high uh, and it was about a six by six square with the um, wire going into the ground a foot and a half. And that was his grass area that he could run around in so we'd take him out every day to get his exercise and get eat his grass and have fun out there when I had the kids in the backyard. 
and I had no idea how long rabbits would live. My husband's uh, sister used to have some bunny rabbits, and there's lived about, oh, I don't know, four or five years, so kind of thought that may be the life expectancy of a rabbit. And our little bandit lived for about 10 years. <laughs> Every winter I'd go be out there, well, we'd go out every day and give him little fresh vegetables to eat and clean his cage and everything. But when it got winter time, I'd have to go out and clean up his water bottle and take it out and defrost it every three hours. <laughs> but we love that little guy. It's really, really fun. Okay, so basically this is all I'm doing is turning the pencil and coloring stripes and bringing them well, stripes, I'm not saying stripes, uh, little little lines. I'm working here down up because the fur layers usually go down in a layer up here. I'm doing it backwards because I want to see the fur come down. <laughs> Make sure I'm going the right direction. So I will just change in between the two until they meet up. Then we'll get another color. I will leave the um, colors down below in the box. And I'm just basically picking a color and just using it until I think they have enough of that color in it. And then I'll go to another color. I'm making him a little fluffier than he was intended to be just by adding little short lines outside of his area. Now I'm going to get you down to his eye. I know I've had it up a little bit because I'm going to go in with a darker color around his eye and I'm also going to change his eye right now. He kind of looks like he's looking up in the air. And poor little guy, I want him looking down at his little girl here. So we're going to take a black pencil and we're going to add a little more black to his eye here. And I'm going to cover up that little spot. And I'm going to add a little bit of this black into his fur too. And a little around his nosey, around her nose. Some hair up in his ear, too. And a little down here around his chin. Okay, then when we put in his new um, little highlight, when I can find my pen here, 
<sighs> it's always this way. <laughs> you start coloring and then you have everything laid out except for the one thing you need. Okay. We're going to have her looking up and we're going to have him looking down. So I'm going to put a spot there. And... there, little one. And if that doesn't look right, I will change it again. Okay, he is mostly done fur-wise. And you'll see all the little strokes and how fuzzy he is. And then we have to work on her a little bit. She has lighter colors, so I'm only going to take out the um, lighter browns. And we're going to add in an ivory on her because she has a a lighter chest. And a little bit lighter on her leg here. And her ear. So we will just be adding these colors for her. This is the uh, raw umber and we'll bring some of that. change the direction down and up on this, especially on her ear. And then we haven't done much on her head up here either. Okay, so um, what I've done is just finished up her eye a little bit, added a little more um, inking down here at the bottom, and all I did was take the uh, ink and go around where the uh, snow is and bring it up into the fur, and if you notice, they now have whiskers. Sorry that did not get filmed, but... Um, Bunnies have whiskers, so I added those on in there too. And now we're going to work on the birds up here at the top. So I will get the pencils out for that. Okay, so I got some pencils to use here. And um, one's going to be black, obviously for this little guy's wings. Then I have a Venetian red and a dark flesh, kind of a pinky tone, and a magenta, which is probably not my best choice, but I'm kind of limited on reds in this uh, family, so I'm just going to be darkening up his chest there and adding more dimension to their wings. So I'll go ahead and get the black going here just for shading. And they don't have fur, but they do have feathers and kind of stroke it a little bit like feathers. And he's got like dots on his chest. And we will be going over that again with some more ink tents. 
give her some color in her wings too, but she's a uh, browner on the top. And just kind of darken them up. And do a little on their feet. And like a little shadow down there. Okay, what we're going to do is go ahead high school. Here's, get a little more, um, let's see. Like a darker chocolate on the palette here. I used it up on the other fur and we're going to add a little darker to her. Trying to bring that color up. And down her tail here. just to darken her up a bit and then we will get out a darker gray and put that on there too so that's more of a black oh that's interesting it doesn't pick up as well I don't know why. Oh. Okay. Let's make sense. I picked up the outliner pencil, <laughs> pencil out of the ink tents, and um, outliner pencil is not a um, water-soluble pencil. It's more like a graphite pencil. Add that on there. Then I'm gonna have to get a dark pencil. So if you'll hold on for just a moment, please. Okay, we're going to um, go ahead and start with her or his chest. <laughs> Sorry, I have uh, two pencils here. Um, the magenta I think might be a little too dark, and then I have the um, what is it Venetian red, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. And just add a little bit of the redder color in his chest and kind of blend it into the fluff under his chin. And it gets lighter as it goes down. And we'll add a little bit of it in her, but she is a very light color on her chest there. So we'll get out uh, some of the dark peach on her. Let's see how that works. She's got more of a brown tone. We're going to add a little of this around her eye too. And a little around him. Just bring that color down. We want a red chested bird, but we don't want a bright hot red. Okay, so then we are just going to, um, sorry, pencils, going to fluff in some feathers, darken up his, because he's pretty black. And then we'll have to look at their picture again, trying to fluff in some feathers there. I just go into um, Google like I did yesterday. And double check the coloring on um, 
the birdies. I don't know what color their beaks are. We have robins, but um, they have uh, flown the coop for the winter. <laughs> I think they're kind of a yellowy color beak. Yep, kind of a little yellow orange. And do I have a yellow? Okay, this is yellow glaze. And we're just going to add that onto their beaks. And add a little down here just to give them a little more uh, kind of dimension in their coloring. All right, then I need to get a orangey color to highlight that. And that's in the tin over here. And that'll work. What do we got? Cad Turn the pencil over. It might be easier to read. Cadium orange. <laughs> we'll add a little of that in there, just next to the beak there. And maybe add a little bit of that color around here too. Highlights. And on their feet. Can you see their feet? All right. I'll be adding a little dots in their eyes, but I really have to get close to see them. They're really tiny. So what we're going to do is pull you up here so you can see what we've done. There we go. And I'm going to try to figure out a background. So it all depends if I'm going to keep these little snowflakes. I'm not sure. So I'll be back in a little bit and we will figure that part out. Okay, guys, we're back. And I've decided we're going to sort of keep the um, little snowflakes. I've lightened them up with a little of this. This is a sanding eraser. And I just took it and rubbed it on the top. Only for the fact that... Um, sorry, get all that fluff off. I want to emboss on this. And in order to do that, one, I'm going to have to have those lighter sorry and um, I'm going to stamp some snowflakes in here and I got some stamps that are about the same size as the uh, being snowflakes that are inside and then because I got questions on one of the um, pictures that I showed and how I did the background I'm gonna go ahead and um, make a background with a bigger stamp here with snowflakes on it and then we're going to do some inking. The inking is going to be done in a uh, pinkish tone for this picture because Valentine's Day. And I am going to uh, do the snow on the branches and I might add a few other little details to that. But right now we're going to um, put our attention on the uh, stamping. So what I have to do is, because I made them lighter, that's fine when I put ink on there give the uh, detail to the area. Just a acrylic block with a stamp on it. I have uh, this stuff here. It's uh, EK Tools and it's like a powder you put on. Get rid of any um, fingerprints, oils, and gosh knows what else I had stuck all over this paper. <laughs> then I'm going to use um, Versamark ink. It is a clear uh, watermark stamping pad. Um, it's kind of like a little tacky glue, basically. And I'm just going to get it on the one. It kind of goes that way. I'm going to stamp it down. 
And then directly on top of that, I don't know if you can see it, but it shines so it's wet. We're going to put on a bit of embossing powder. And this embossing powder is a, a detail white by Stampendous. Anyway, we're going to put that right on top of where I stamped it. What this does is it adheres to the um, glue that I had set down with the stamp. And then we're going to take the excess off. And then we are stuck with this powdery stuff on top. Then I will take a heat gun and I will heat that up and I'll show you what it does, but I'm going to stamp the other two while I'm here. So we have the uh, smaller one, same process, ink it up, kind of line up where those little guys are, stick it down, and put the embossing powder on top. And put it on the side of the paper here. Try not to get it all over my desk. <laughs> okay, and then we have one more little baby here. And we'll get it done. And just stamp it. And that's over here. And the embossing powder and then shake it off. Okay. And now we will put all this stuff back in the jar. And close up our Versamark ink for right now. Now I take a heat gun to this and all it is is um, this tool. You turn it on and you hold it over that area and it melts the embossing powder into a shiny um, glossy finish. Okay, So it's kind of like putting a plastic coating on it. And then when I get back from doing that I will show you what it looks like and how we're going to use that in our design. Okay, we're back and um, you can see, hopefully you can see, I can't tell if you can see, but they're shiny and they're uh, dry. And when you ink over this, it will resist. Any water will resist. So you could watercolor over this. You can um, put ink down over it. Um, colored pencils won't stick to it, but I've never tried that and not going to on this piece of paper. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do is going to take this stamp, and this is a very large um, stamp, and it has a lot of different snowflakes on it. And I'm going to decide where I want to put it in uh, the picture here. And then I'm going to stamp it the same way and do the embossing the same way and then we will um, come back and do the snow down here and then the inking so i don't need uh, you to actually see that but i'm just going to stamp it in different spots and maybe use some other snowflakes in here but using the same method and then i'll show you that when i get back Okay guys, we're back and I'm going to do the inking from probably here up <laughs> and around the edges. I have not colored the um, snow in yet, but I think I'm just going to paint that in with a white acrylic. Um, this I'm going to do um, with probably a little white acrylic and a little bit of blue. But we're going to do the uh, at least the outside and in here with my Distress Ink in the Victorian Velvet because it's a nice soft pink and 
the uh, distress tool. Um, just the big one. A little sponge goes on there. And I am going to go ahead and ink this up. You notice on the back of the pad that only one portion really gets any ink on it. And that's because I do a light touch and I only use that portion. So I ink that up. And one of the things you can do if you're getting blotches in here is to ink it up and start on the outside of your paper. Okay. Um, this is a mat I have. It's not my desk. So you guys can use a um, plastic sheet, a piece of wax paper, or anything else you want to stick under here. A piece of paper is fine too. You get the ink on there and you start over here. And see how I'm getting a little pink here, which is fine. But it takes off the excess. And then when you bring in your ink, with a very light touch, you're not going to get any of those little spots. I will get a few because I have some spots going on on my paper. And this is watercolor paper, so I will just bring it in. And like I said, very light touch. I barely have any pressure on this. The more pressure you put on, the more spotting you're going to get. So this is kind of like uh, rubbing it on your skin like a feather. That's that. Then we'll just bring it down. I don't know how much of this you can see. <laughs> we'll start up here again. Start over here. Bring the color in. And this is the fun effect that you get with using the embossing and the stamping. As all that is going to stay white. <laughs> Gives you this cool effect. I bring the ink very lightly up to the birds and darkest over here on the corner or anywhere where the white is. My sponge is falling apart. I'll bring my ink down a little further so you can see a little bit more. Just bring it on in right up to the heart. And I'm going to use a watercolor or water on this to give it some splotches too. So like if any areas get a little too dark, you can go over them with the ink and darken them up. Or you can uh, add water to it and it'll make a nice little splotchy effect. Got a snowflake up here, some coming around here. I'm going to put a little in here where the birds are too, trying not to touch the birds. Okay, and then we're going to just keep going around the edges. Bringing out all the snowflakes. And adding some color in. I'm not terribly um, picky about the ink coming down because I am going to splatter it with water. But you can take your time and go very gently on this. And then you can go back and put more color down instead of trying to get it dark all at once. And you can do a couple different colors if you want, but I want this whole background done in this pink color. So I'm going to go ahead and go around the whole thing. And up this side. And there we are. For the most part, that is what I want the outside to look like. 
Now I have this um, spray bottle. It's the Distress Sprayer. It just flats it out in a different um, pattern than uh, a normal sprayer will. And it's a, this little spot down here looks a little funny. I'm just going to spray it with some water. Watercolor paper. It's going to take a little more time to react. And then we'll pull it up. And you also get this cool uh, splattered effect. So we'll do it again. Cam for a little while and pull some up. And we go around the whole paper doing that. And I love the effect that this gives it. Go around the whole thing here. We're also going to um, splatter this paper with uh, some white acrylic paint for a few little more snowflakes. So you just play with it until you like the effect you're getting. And then you have like these effects here and the nice little splattering going across up here. And I'm not crazy about that one, so we'll just add some more water over here and dry that up. It'll also get fixed up with some of the um, splattering I'm going to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch my tool, and hopefully I have one that is kind of pink here, to the uh, small detail brush, or pad, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to double check this on a piece of white paper to make sure it's a decent color. Okay. I'm going to go in here and get these. And this is a really light touch. Because this tool is just a little um, smaller and you'll get a lot of little strokes if you're not careful. So very lightly, I go around, try not to get on the snow, although I'm painting it with a white acrylic, but still <laughs> don't want to get it too much. I put a little more pressure on the snowflakes because I want them to stand out a little more, down to the bunnies' noses. I'm sorry if that got loud. Microphone's right there. And around this bunny. Okay, and I'm going to go in with the bigger tool now that I've got those touched up a little more and just give it a little more color in there. And in between the bunnies. Sorry, I don't know if I'm in camera here. Right down to the snow. And up here. Right down to their noses again. And then we're going to um, Splatter that also. And get that wiped up. Maybe a little bit more over here. It reacts, the water reacts different with the Distress ink on every paper, so sometimes you have to leave it down a little longer, and sometimes not as long. There we go. We'll let that dry, and then we will add 
in some of the uh, splattered paint and paint the uh, snow effects around here. And I will be back for that. Um, painting the snow is just going to be uh, white acrylic paint. And then um, that is also what I'm going to use to do the splattering. So let me clean this up and let this dry, and I will be right back. Okay, here we go. This is the um, folk art uh, acrylic paint that I use, and I guess it's called Wicker White. <laughs> uh, it's the one I've always used, and I just put a little here on the desk, which I'll move this a little bit. I have to add water to that, so I just spray a little from this thing, and. We'll get the paintbrush wet. This is just a, boy, I mean, you can tell I use this a lot. Uh, I, art brushes that came from, I guess, Hobby Lobby or Michael's in a packet. Very cheap. <laughs> and then we just add some of these little splatters. So they kind of look like um, little snowflakes falling down. That's okay if they get on the bunnies. Just going to add these all over. Kind of softens up the picture a little. don't want it too much on the birds, but I want some up there. I'll just turn it. It gets kind of messy when you do this, so keep that in mind. I don't mind. My desk is covered in little dots. <laughs> just really no rhyme or reason. You just want to get the dots on the paper. This will also help to cover up any of the um, little things you don't like on your paper. Blend everything together. We're also going to use this uh, to color in same paint to color in the snow here. And just to gonna let that first coat dry. And I say that because if any of this has gotten towards the inking part, you might pick up some of that. So we're just piling the snow in here. Make it thicker. And then around the bunnies. And I'll add a little blue to that. Get a clump there, that's okay. And we got a lot of snow up here too. So I'm just kind of tapping it on there. Bringing it up to the line and bringing it down to the branch. And then this will dry and I will probably have to add another coat. Of that. Then any more little sprinkles before I wipe it up off my desk. <laughs> came from the paintbrush, so don't worry about that. There we go. So I'm probably going to end up adding a little bit of uh, sparkle to the page also. And I will show you a picture at the end of the video on uh, how it looks. Get that little piece off that came off the paintbrush. <laughs> uh, anyway, 
Sorry, <laughs> I digressed. I will show you a picture at the end of the video of what it looks like all finished. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in a next video. If you like these kind of videos, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell if you want notifications, and if you want to, you can hit me a little thumbs up. It helps me out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye now.